Okay, getting ready for R. So in this video, I'm going to assume that you have already followed the instructions in the book to download and install both R and R Studio. There is a difference. So if you follow these instructions here, you should be able to get everything set up on your local machine. If you have any trouble doing this, then make sure you come along to the in-person workshop on Thursdays. We're in the Rendell building in the PC Teaching Center, and there'll be a team there uh, available to help you complete the install. I think for most of you it should go okay. If you're using a Chromebook, you're probably going to have a few problems, or if you're using a Mac as well, you may have some trouble. Uh, there uh, are always university computers available for you to use to complete the exercises, and they will already have R and R Studio installed on them. So if you get stumped this week and you just need to complete the assignment, but you can't get it on your local machine, go and use a university computer. Right, so I'm assuming that you've done that already. Let's take a first look at our RStudio environment. Uh, I've already opened it up, here it is. This is probably what you're gonna see. Let's just uh, deconstruct what's going on here. I've got um, this pane in my top right called global environment that will have any variables I've created, any data frames that I've created, I'll be able to inspect them there. Uh, in the bottom right, I've got kind of the files on my computer. So I'm by default, I think I'm in my, my home folder here. And uh, you can see everything on my local machine. Everything on the left here is what we call the console. And you can actually type commands straight into your console. So if I do print, open bracket, quotation marks, hello, BIOS 103, exclamation mark, and hit enter, it will just print it out in the console output immediately. That's okay, but I don't really want that. I want to write what we call a script file when I'm writing my code so that I can save it and I can run it again. I can close this down, I can open it back up and I can run it again. If I only use the console, think of this as a kind of short term memory. It won't remember the commands I've made. So I'll have to type them all in again. So before I go and create a script file, I'm actually gonna do something else first. I'm gonna create an R project and think of an R project as just a folder containing everything associated with a particular bit of work in R Studio. And uh, you can see right now the, in the top right here, it says project none. I want to create a new project. So I'm going to either click this create a project icon, which is the second from the left at the top bar there, or I can click file, new project. Give it a second to think. Okay, and in this case, I am just going to select a new directory. When I say directory, that means folder, okay? Let's create a new project. Let's call it, I don't know, week one. And I'm just gonna, let me save this somewhere sensible. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now, I think. There you go, open that up and I'm not gonna check any of these. I'm just going to click create project. And there we go. So it looked pretty much the same, except now in the top right, it says week one. And I'm in the correct folder now. So I'm actually in that week one folder that's just been created on my desktop. And you can see the only file here is this rproj. And what that rproj allows me to do is reopen this project at any time in our studio. Any files I create in this folder will immediately come up here and uh, I, can, I can use them in my project. That's really, really important when it comes to managing data files because I have to have opened the project 
in order to start reading the files in this directory. Okay, now I'm not going to read any files right now. I'm going to just work through what's in the book. The first thing I'm going to do is create a script file. So to do that, I'm going to click the first icon here. It says new file, our script. And it's good practice here to save that immediately. Uh, so I'm just going to call that test.r. There you go, and you can see it appears now in my uh, my list of files that's in this project. I can I can do exactly the same what I did earlier in this script file. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit here. There we go. Okay. Except this time to run any line in my script file, I can click the run button, or I like to press com Control and Enter. Okay, so that will run the line and it will give me a new line underneath it. If ever I want to run all of the lines in the file at one in one go, I can click the source button. And that will do exactly the same. Okay, so right now I'm going to look at uh, the example of a more complicated script file that is in the book. Here we go, 1.2.3. And I'm going to copy this script here from this box. So I've copied it to my clipboard and I'm going just to paste that straight in. Let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to overwrite the first line I've written there. Control and V. There you go. So you can see if immediately if I run this, I'll get an output, right? So let's just unpack what's going on here. So this is a this is a this is four lines of code really. Anything where you see a hash at the start of the line is called a comment. That won't be compiled, it won't do anything in your code, but it's really, really useful for documenting what you're trying to do. Uh, here I'm creating a variable, and I can see I've already been very naughty, and I've used an equal sign. That's not okay. Um, that left or less than hyphen combination of symbols is typically used in R when we're allocating something, in this case a number, an integer, to a new variable that we're calling seed. So when I use the word variable, I just mean a word that is storing something in R, okay? So it could be storing an integer in this case, it could be storing a string, it could be storing a list of other variables. But for right now, I've just called it seed. And the reason I've called it seed is because I'm actually going to use this number to prime my random number generator, which is all working in the background underneath the hood here. And so that if I run a random number function, it will give me a consistently, or it'll give me the consistently the same random number. Okay, that sounds a bit weird uh, because I, I want to generate a random number. Uh, but if I were to run this script again, it would always give me this 0 0.389.0714 here. So that was the first line is the seed. The second line is to set the seed. So I'm basically telling my random number generator to accept this value of 999. This line on line eight is actually the one that is generating the random number. And again, I'm assigning that to a variable called random number. And this is the important thing here. This is another function in R. Incidentally, this is also a function that sets seed. Anything where you see an open bracket, close bracket with something in the middle is a function. It can also t probably take m multiple parameters. The word seed in this case is what we call a parameter. That's something we feed into a function. Uh, in this case, the run if function means generate a random number or, or more than one random number, but because I've only got the one in here, I'm only generating one random number. And then I'm saving that to my variable called random underscore number. The underscores are important. You can't have any gaps in your variable names. And then the last thing I'm doing here is I'm printing out my variable. So this print is another function in R. It's got an open bracket and a closed bracket, and I've stuck my random number in there. And if I had to run that, it would, it would, it would just give me the answer, give me the output, sorry, which is 0.38. If I seed it with a different value, for example, uh, 103, uh, if I run this line, uh, it will rerun the line. But if I then rerun the line separately on line 11, 
it will still give me the same value. And that's because I haven't run the lines in between, which are important. So what I'll probably do in this case is click source and run everything in one go. And you can see this time it's printed out a different random number. Okay. If I do any other random number in here, let's do uh, 999. Actually, I did that first, didn't I? Let's do 111 and hit source. It will print that out. Okay. And that's all we're going to do for the script today. So uh, good luck with that.